Okay. So the exam will be 30 multiple choice question, and each multiple choice will be worth two points. So it will be a total of 60 points for the multiple choice. And then for the short part, you will have three questions for the short part. There will be one question that will cover the reactions of alkenes. So in the reactions of alkenes, you will be given a reactant, and then you'll be given maybe the reagent, and you'll be asked to determine what the product is. So sometimes you'll be given the reagent and the product, and you'll be asked to determine what the, re the reagent will be. And then there will be other questions where you will know the reagent and the product, and you will have to deduce what the reactant is. So it will be a combination of that. You will have a series of questions like that. And this question, and this number 95 will actually help you, will prepare you guys for that kind of question. Then there will be a second series of questions that has to do with a substitution and elimination reaction. Okay, and that one will test your, you know, your knowledge on substitution and elimination, especially the stereochemistry of the product and stuff like that. Then the last question will be a mechanism question. Um, well, you guys will be asked to write a mechanism of one of a certain reaction. It will not be a complicated one. If you know all your mechanism, I don't see why that mechanism question will be difficult because I tried to make that question easy. So that's the structure of your exam, and the total will be 110 points, okay? So, let's start with uh, question number 95. I choose that question because it is a good summary of what we guys will have tomorrow. Okay. So the question is asking us to draw the product of the following reaction, including their configuration. So we need to take the stereochemistry into consideration. And the first reaction we have over here is a reaction with HBr. So your job will first to be able to know what each reagent can do. That's what I want from you guys. You should be able to know what each reagent can do. HBr, it means you are adding a hydrogen and a bromine across the double bond. That's what HBr does. Okay. Uh, Br2CH3OH. This set of reagents will add a bromine atom and an OCH3. No, I'm not drawing the structure yet. We're just recognizing the reagent, what each reagent can do. Now, when you have H2O and H2SO4, that is the acid catalyzed hydrolysis, the acid catalyzed hydrolysis will add a hydrogen and an OH across the double bond. We have to the sign H, up like the H2 in the presence of uh, palladium and carbon will help you add two hydrogens. So HH across the double bond. Br2 and H2O will help you add a bromine and an OH across the double bond. Now, uh, BH3, THF, and uh, peroxide and hydroxide will help you add an OH and an H across the double bond. And the last set of reagents, in this case, uh, Br2 in the presence of methylene chloride, will enable you add two bromine atoms across the double bond. So, Br, Br. Now, I think there is one set of reagents that is missing here. Ozone. Okay. The ozone will basically cleave the double bond, okay? So that will lead to a cleavage of the double bond. That's what ozone will do. So that's the first thing I want you guys to be able to recognize. Because when I will be grading, that's what I, one thing I'm looking for. If you know what each reagent can do. Now, the next thing I want you guys to know now is the stereochemistry of the product. The stereochemistry of the product. This reaction over here, the first one here, the stereochemistry of the product. Guy, turn off your mic if you are not asking any questions. Turn it on and then turn it off. Okay, great. So the stereochemistry of the product for the bromine and methylene chloride reaction, that is an example of an anti-addition, okay? So this reaction is anti. And what I mean by anti-addition is that one bromine will add on the dashboard 
and the other bromine will add on the wage bond. That's the meaning of anti-addition. Okay. Now, the second reaction, the one that follows below, is an example of a sin addition. Sin addition means that uh, they will either add on the they will add on the same type of bonds. So either both of them will add on the wage, or both of them will add on the dash. That's the meaning of a sin addition. The next reaction is an example of an anti-addition. And in this case, one of them, either one, we don't really care which one. One of them will add on the dash, then the other one will add on the wage. Does that make sense? Hydrogen and palladium is an example of a sin. That's an example of a sin addition. So they will all add on the same type of bond. And in this case, I chose to put both of them on the wage. Um, acid catalyzed. The acid catalyzed reaction is uh, a resmi. So it means the stereochemistry doesn't really matter because it will form both the R and S. So this will be a resmate. I will call that race. And it's a resmate because it goes through the formation of a carbocation. So every reaction that goes through the formation of a carbocation will most likely end up being a resmate. Then the next reaction that we have over here will be an example of an anti-addition again. That's another anti-addition. Meaning one of them will be on the dash and the other one will be on the wage. Then the last but not the least reaction, because it goes through the formation of a carbocation, that will give you a race mate. Are we good up to this what point? Instead of anti, does it matter which one you put on the wedge and which one you put on the dash? No. When it's anti, when it, when it's anti, it doesn't matter which one goes on the wedge, which one goes on the dash. First thing for the anti, I want to see one on the wedge and one on the dash. Okay, then we'll now get to the second, the third aspect. The third aspect that I want you guys to recognize when you do this thing. And that third aspect has to do with the sin and the anti-addition. The third aspect I want you guys to recognize here when you're dealing with this uh, are the ones with the sin and the anti-addition. If an addition is anti or sin, there are two possibilities of products. Your product can either be trio or your product can either be erythrio. Okay, so you can have a product that is uh, trio or you can have a product that is erythrio. That's only true if the reaction is either sin or anti. Does that make sense? Now, what I want you guys to note is that. A trio product, a trio product is a product with two, two uh, stereo center. That's what you need to keep in mind. A trio product has two stereo center, and one of the centers will be S, the other center will be R. Or one of center, one of the center will be R, then the other one S. That is what a trio product is. Then the erythrio product. Both centers will have the same stereochemistry. So they will either be SS or RR. Does that make sense? Okay. So the best way I always remember trio. I always say trio is the same thing as saying one center is S, the other one is R. So S, R, T. So that the T here stands for trio. So with a trio structure, one center is R, the other center is S. With the erythrio, both centers are SS. Now, my question is, how do you know, how do you know if a product will be trio or if a product will be uh, erythrio? We need to be able to know. So what I would say, the best way for us to remember this, the best way for us to know that is, if your reaction gives you a sin product, if your reaction gives you a sin product, for example, this reaction here gives me a sin product, and this other reaction here generates a sin product. If that reaction gives you a sin product, and your starting material, which is this guy, if that starting material has a trans stereochemistry, then your product will be trio. Does that make sense? 
Okay. If your starting material, if your addition, sorry, if your addition is a scene addition, and your starting material has a cis stereochemistry, then your product will be erythrium. Are we going downstairs? Okay. Now, the other option, if your reaction is an anti-addition, for example, these are the anti-addition here. If your reaction is an anti-addition, so that's the anti-addition, and your starting material is in the trans configuration, then your product should be erythrium. Does that make sense? And the reverse is true with the other one. If your addition, you <clears throat> if your addition is an anti-addition, and your starting material is a trans starting material, then your product will be erythrium. And remember, erythrium means that both center will be SS. If your starting material, is, if your product is as a result of an anti-addition, but your starting material is cis, then your product will be a trio. And trio means there will be RS or SR. That's the meaning of trio. Are we good up to this point? Yeah, so if we have that general picture, if we have that general picture, then we can move forward. Then we can move forward now to solve this problem individually and actually have the answers okay so let's do that together first thing we want to do is to identify the starting material okay uh, is the starting material a cis or a trans meaning is it an e or a z that's the first thing we need to do so we are answering the problem systematically so in this case when i look at this when i look at this carbon atom here Okay, this is a low priority group and this is a high priority group. And when I look at the next carbon atom, this carbon atom over here, I will have this one as my low priority and I will have this other one here as the high priority. So because the high priorities are on the same side, because the high priority are on the same side, so this my starting material is a Z starting material. So that is a cis starting material. I hope we are good up to this point. So because I have a cis, because I have a cis starting material, this will be the my region of interest. I will focus on that one. Does that make sense? I have the C starting material here. That's the meaning of that C. My starting material is cis, and so I will only focus on that one. Then the next thing is, if I have an anti-addition, then my product needs to be trio. For example, this is an anti-addition over here, so my product will need to be a trio. My product will need to be a trio, so I will simply draw the product and make the product trio. And remember what trio means. Trio means that the centers will be SR. That's the meaning of trio. Okay. So let's go down now and draw the product. I will draw the product a little bit down here. So I will have. Oops. Uh, let me change the edge. I will have a CH3. I will have a carbon. I will have the other carbon. Then down here I will have a CH uh, CH3 subscript 2 then CH3 optional. Then I have to draw, remember what uh, those stereochemistry stereochemical drawings. One of them will be which, one of them will be dash. Don't ask me which one is which, which one is dash, because I don't know yet. So I'm just drawing them, and then I will determine their stereochemistry. Does that make sense? 
Yes, right now I will simply draw them and then determine their stereochemistry. Uh, oh. Are you doing the um, product with HBR? I'm doing the I'm doing this product. I'm working on this product for now. Oh, okay. Yes, I'm working on the anti product right now. Okay. So now because it's the anti product, I'm adding I'm adding my HBR. Sorry. I'm adding the HBR. So there will be one BR here, and then there will be the other BR here. That's the first thing I want you guys to note. That will be the first product. This is the thing. One BR is on the dash, the other BR is on the wage. That's the thing I want you to take note. And that's what takes care of the anti. Okay. Excuse me, Dr. Chico. Yes. Um, I think uh, I'm a little confused because I thought that um, you drew the molecule trans. It looks trans, I thought. No. Okay. Let me start again. The starting material is a Z starting material, meaning a cis starting material, which is this guy. Because the starting material is cis, it means that we'll spend our time here. Okay. And now the type of addition we have all identified that this is an example of an anti-addition so we reduce again and focus here because we know it is an anti-addition one of the bromine will be on the dash and the other bromine will be on the wage does that make sense now we need to verify and see if we have actually drawn the trio structure because it needs to be trio and trio means that one center needs to be R and another center needs to be S. That's the meaning of trio. Okay, so we need to verify that. Let's double check that. Let's check this first center. What is the stereochemistry of that center? So we are revising that. Stereochemistry of that center, this is the highest priority. Priority number one, priority number two, priority number three. So we are traveling in this direction. And that direction looked to me as the S direction because that is counterclockwise. So this center is an S center. Now let's check the other center, this other one here. Let's check that center and see. With that center, this is my priority number one. This will be priority number two. And that will be priority number three. So with this center, I'm traveling in this direction. That is a counterclockwise direction. But... The lowest group is not on the dash. So because the lowest group is not on the dash, I reverse the direction and this becomes R. Do you see that? So now my centers are SR. And remember what we said. SR means trio. Is that okay? SR means trio. So... We have drawn the correct structure. So this will be the product for the first reaction. Are we good? Because I want us to be clear. If you have any doubt, just let me know. So let's repeat the same example. Let's repeat the same example with this one. Let's do this one now. Yes. He said if you have any doubt, let you know. I have. Okay. Um, I'm confused right now. Like backtrack a bit. Say that again. I didn't get the question. Can you like just backtrack and explain that really quick again? Okay. Do you do you mind? Let's do the other one because I will re-explain the same thing but using a different example. Without her. Okay. okay. Yes. So right now I want us to do this example here. This one. This is the next example I want us to do. The one that is highlighted. So I will delete this one here. To give us room to do the other one. Wait, let me get Someone speaking. Okay, no, you're good. Okay, great. So let's start again from the beginning. Now, here, I first examine what my starting material is, and I notice that the starting material is a Z confirmation. Z stands for cis, the same size. Okay, because it is a cyst, 
I have these two choices this guy here and this guy here those are my two choices now I notice that these reagents are the reagents that will lead to the formation of an anti product and because that's the only reagent that leads to the formation of the anti product I now further reduce my choices to ACT does that make sense I further reduce my answer to ACT so my product need to be an anti-product with a trio confirmation and so i now go ahead and i draw it out okay so i need to draw it out i will start by drawing out the two carbon atoms of interest which are the green uh, these two carbon atoms those are the two carbon atoms of interest those guys i will start by drawing them so those two carbons are there with their different bond types Okay, now the first carbon atom, this one, is connected to a hydrogen and a CH3. By definition, I always like to put my hydrogen on the dash, and then the CH3, I will put the CH3 here. For the second carbon, it is made up of a CH3 and that bulky group. So, I will put uh, the CH3 here. You can put it anywhere because at the end you have to determine the configuration. And the bulky group, I will put the bulky group here ch ch3 and 2 now what are the group that we are adding onto the bomb we are adding a br so i will put the br on the wedge and we are adding an oh so i will put the oh on the dash by putting the br on the wedge and the oh on the dash i am respecting the fact that the addition should be anti now i need to double check to see if i have done a trio addition because it needs to be trio so I need to double check that it is trio. And trio means one center should be S, the other center should be R. And so what I now do, I determine the stereochemistry at the center. Bromine is priority number one, priority number two, priority number three. So with this center, I am moving in this direction. Okay, great. So we're moving in that direction, and that direction, which direction is that? Let me see, let me see. Counterclockwise, right? So that is the S direction. Then I do the same thing for the other group. The OH is priority number one. This will be priority number two, and that will be priority number three. So with this one, I am traveling in this direction. Which direction is that, guys? Uh, that's the R. But the lowest priority is not on the back. Take note, the lowest priority is not on the back. So I need to reverse it. If I reverse it, that will give me an S. So in this case, we haven't drawn the correct product because both centers are SS. Whereas we need set the centers to be RS. Does that make sense? We need the centers to be RS. And one thing we can do is just switching. We, can, we need to do a switching. If we perform a switching, that will help us adjust the center. So by switching, I notice that if I do this uh, switch, I replace, remove the CH3, then remove this group. I'm just doing a switching. I will put the heavy group here, and then put the CH3 here. So let's see that. If we switch like that, this becomes priority number one, uh, priority number two and then priority number three that switch will now make us travel in this direction which is the s direction and then we'll reverse it it becomes the r direction is that okay with that i hope so i hope that is okay now the rest of the work i will let you guys do it so you guys should try this one on your own and then try this one on your own. If you have difficulties, first thing tomorrow in class, point it out because we have a review tomorrow in class. And I'll also let you try this one on your own. If you have any difficulties, point it out. First thing tomorrow in class, I will look at it. Because I want us to look at other type of, uh, other, other aspect of the things that we shall be doing tomorrow. So we have to remember what products are formed and we have to remember um, whether they're anti or sin and then we just go based off of that. 
Yes. So the first thing you need to be able to know what product are formed. If that product are formed through an anti or a sin addition. And if they are formed through an anti or sin addition, would that be a trio or the erythrio? So that's why this my table here is important. And to memorize this table, all you need to know is just one of them. If you know one of them, then you can know the other, the remaining three. And again, I want you guys to know that trio means SR and erythrio means SS. Does that make sense? Okay, I, I believe the silence is, it means everything is fine. So the other type of problem I had in mind that I want us to go through is number 64. Number 64 is an example of the type of problem I want us to go through. So in number 64, you were given the reactant and then the product. Then they're asking you to determine what the reagent would be. This is number 64. They are asking you to determine what those question marks would be. Okay. And I expect you guys to be able to know that too. So let's do, let's go through some of them. Let's go through some of them quickly. So let me start from this one. I will call this one my number one. Uh, that will be number one. This will be number two. That will be number three, four, five, six, seven. Eight and nine so I'm numbering them so that we should be able to follow each other so for number one first thing is that we need to be able to recognize that we are adding two bromine groups that's what I want you guys to be able to see that it is an addition of two bromine and so the two bromine can only be added if we use the product BR2 in the presence of methylene chloride this is important if you don't tell me that it's in the presence of methylene chloride you will not earn the full points. Okay. Product number two. Product number two, I want you guys to recognize that in product number two, what you are doing, you are simply adding two hydrogens. That's why the hydrogens were not shown. And the only way you can add the hydrogens is by using hydrogens in the presence of palladium and carbon. That's the way you can add the hydrogen. Okay. Oops. I don't know what happened there. Okay. So adding hydrogen in the presence of palladium and carbon. Reagent number three. Reagent number three, I mean reaction number three, you need to be able to recognize that we are adding a bromine and, and we are also adding a hydrogen. Do you see that? And the hydrogen is not shown. So the only thing you need here will be HBr. Okay. Reaction number four. Reaction number four, we are forming an epoxide. This ring, this three-member ring is called an epoxide. And the only way we can form an epoxide is if we use MCPBA. Okay, or RCOOH. So something with three oxygen. Anything with three oxygen will help you add that epoxide. Reaction number four, because we are forming a carbonyl, there is only one reaction that we know in class that forms a carbonyl, and that is ozonolysis. So that will be ozone in the presence of that and zinc. That's our ozonolysis. Number six, two things. You are adding a Br and you are adding an OH. If you're adding a Br, then that's a Br2. And because you're adding the OH, that will be in the presence of water. Number seven, we are adding an OHCH3, oh, sorry, an OCH3 and an H. 
there's a hidden edge there because you are doing that it means it is an acid catalyzed reaction in the presence of an alcohol CH3OH how are we supposed to know when we're adding a like a hidden H? Like how are we supposed to know when there's a hidden H? Well, usually the H's are not shown. The hydrogens are not shown. So you want to ident you want to compare the structure of the product and the structure of the starting material. Look for example at reaction number eight. Reaction number eight, this is my product and this is my starting material. So when I do a comparison, I notice that there is an OH added. And when you look at this carbon here, this carbon here is now having three hydrogens, whereas the same carbon over here only had two hydrogens. It means that there is an extra hydrogen that has been added. Uh, Stephanie, 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 you need to mute, 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 please. So, Zaria, did I answer your question? Can you repeat that, please? Okay, look at, uh, look, let's look at reaction number eight. When you compare the structure of the product and the structure of the reactant, okay, the two carbon atoms of interest to us are this guy here, and these are the two carbons there. And when I look at that carbon, I notice that there is an OH that has been added. Now, this particular carbon atom here is connected to three hydrogens. The same carbon atom over here on the reactant is only connected to two hydrogens. So that's what informs me that I have an extra hydrogen that has been added to the product. Does that make sense? And in that case, I know that I have added an OH and an H. And the only way I can do that is in the presence of an acid and water. Can you go back to number seven? I don't understand how we got the reagents from the product. Number seven. <laughs> I notice we're adding an OCH3. And that OCH3, <laughs> I notice we've added an OCH3. And over here, we've added an extra hydrogen. Same explanation as number eight. So I know I have added an OCH3 and a hydrogen. OCH3 and a hydrogen can only come from an alcohol. And the way alcohol react, they need the presence of an acid in order to react. Does that make sense? Number nine. Number nine is an anti Makonikov product. And the only anti Makonikov that we've done in class is BH3 in the presence of THF and these guys yeah that's the only anti makonikov product that we know in class okay Vico, one more question so yes for H, instead of h2so4 if we put h3o plus would you still get the same thing if you put h3o plus that's still correct that's still correct excuse me dr zico yes for number five, um, can you can you zoom out because we can't fully see like the number four and number five. Um, so number five, what is that? That's CH three. What? S sulfur. Okay. Are we good? Okay, let's see. I have virtually, I have virtually covered a good portion of what is required for you to be ready for the exam. So we have to remember the reagents and the mechanisms for all those? No, the mechanism, I told you, the mechanism that you need to remember 
uh, is the acid catalyzed, uh, the HBr mechanism, and then the Br2 mechanism. Those are the three mechanisms. So one of them, you guys will have one of them. And then you also need to be able to identify which one is a nucleophile and which one is an electrophile. Does that make sense? And then you need to know that the arrow always starts from the nucleophile and ends at the electrophile. That's something you always need to remember. Because the nucleophile is electron rich and the electrophile is electron deficient. In other words, the nucleophile can be positive or can be negative or neutral. The electrophile can only be positive or neutral also. Dr. Zico, for elimination, does the carbon with the alkyl halide always participate in a pi bond and a product? So repeat that again. In the elimination? Yeah. Does the carbon that has the leaving group always participate in the pi bond and the product? Yes. Always. Always. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, if you guys are done, we'll look at some example at the uh, elimination reaction. If I think we are good, I think we are good with this one. The remaining stuff, you guys just have to, to do it on your own. Uh, like the nomenclature, you need to practice your nomenclature. Know how to determine the E and Z configuration. And know which one is stable, the E or the Z. You know, and stuff like that. That's the things that you guys need to know. And then the carbocation rearrangement. It's important. Your carbocat those are very important, especially in the multiple choice and in, and in your mechanism. If your carbocation is next to a tertiary center, you do a hydral shift. If your carbocation is next to a quaternary center, you do a metal shift. Okay? So those are the things that you need to keep in mind. You need to know which molecule can undergo a rearrangement and which one cannot, based on the nature of the carbocation. So if we are going to add a substitution and elimination before we close. Dr. Zico, what did you mean by the carbocation being next to like a tertiary? I'll give you an example. I'll give you a quick example. So if if I have a molecule, if I have a molecule like this, for example, here, that's a carbocation there. My carbocation is next to a tertiary center. This is a tertiary center here. And so because it is next to a tertiary center, I will do a hydride shift. And to do a hydride shift, you need to be able to show your arrow. So the arrow for the hydride shift will start from the bond here to the positive charge and when you do that arrow you will not have your product the product now will be this the hydrogen will now come here and then the positive charge will go there so this is a one two hydride shift this is an example of a one two hydride shift and this is possible because my carbocation was next to a tertiary center does that make sense yes Zico. Yes. So what happens if it's next to a quaternary center? Metal shift. Thank you. Metal shift. So, for example, if I have that, this is a quaternary center, I do a metal shift. That's the metal shift. And then my new carbocation will be that. That is a metal shift. Okay, are we good with elimination? So, because I want us to go and look at uh, substitution and uh, the other guy. Uh huh. Okay, great. Down to chapter nine. By the way, I was told that chapter 8 is due on Sunday. You guys should not worry about that one. Don't worry about chapter 8. I 
I will I will change that date. I will change the date to the, the real due date. System chapter eight. Okay. So, okay, this is a question. This is a nice question. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to look for for some easy questions. <laughs> Let's see. Dr. Zico? Yes. After this, can we do some multiple choice? Uh, if you have those, if you have the multiple choice, yes, we'll, we can do those. Well, we can do those, yes, that's totally fine. Oh, God, I don't even see those kind of questions. Well, here on this one, I will basically, I would think I would likely just give you guys like a big hint or highlight on the things you need to remember here thing of Well, in the elimination and substitution, uh, basically what I want you guys to remember is just uh, uh, the stereochemistry of the product. I will just give you, because I haven't seen a nice question yet. Well, it doesn't mean I didn't have any question from here. So, <laughs> so basically what I want you guys to remember with elimination and substitution is that um, the product for an elimination reaction. So if we start with the elimination reaction... Your product always must be the most stable alkane. That's the product. So the product must be the most stable. So product equals to the most stable. And stability of alkane implies the more substituted. Okay. So that means the more substituted. That's what the product must be. The most stable, which is the more substituted. And that more stable, meaning more substituted, it means that that more substituted also should have an E configuration. And you remember the E configuration is the same thing as a trans configuration. So if I need, if I ask you for the product of an elimination, whether E1 or E2, that product must be a more stable product. And the most stable product means that the alkene should be the most substituted alkene. And that alkene should have a trans configuration, an E configuration. Does that make sense? I hope you go up to this point. Yeah. Okay. Now, next thing is that it, is someone saying something? Yeah, I was going to say, um, you said... Uh, the most stable is the E configuration with a trans configuration? Yes, because E means trans, basically. Okay. So the more substituted in the trans configuration, that's the most stable product. Okay. Now, the other thing I want you guys to remember is that with elimination reaction, the condition is that elimination reaction is always favored if your base, if the base is bulky. Okay, if you have a bulky base, then chances are that that will be an elimination reaction. If your alky halide, which I will call Rx, if the alky halide is also bulky, then chances are that you will undergo an elimination reaction. Does that make sense? 
and the reverse is true for substitution we'll get to that and then if your base is strong if you have a strong base then you will undergo elimination then you will undergo elimination so same thing by analogy if you want to undergo a substitution you will need to have a weak base if you want to undergo substitution your base should not be bulky if you want to undergo substitution if your archi halide is less bulky chances are that you will undergo a substitution does that make sense so knowing one basically kind of help you guide you to know the other one okay now in terms of substitution there are two types of substitution we have an sn1 and we have an sn2 the SN1 goes through the formation of a carbocation. SN1, it goes through the formation of a carbocation. It means that the rate law of that reaction only depends on the concentration of the archi halide. Whereas the SN2, the rate law depends on the concentration of the archi halide and the concentration of the nucleophile. Does that make sense? And everything we've known about rate of reaction applies here. It means that for an SN1, if I double the archi halide, the reaction double for an SN1. In an SN2, if I double the archi halide and double the nucleophile, then the reaction quadruple. That is 2 times 2. If I triple the archi halide and I triple the nucleophile, the reaction increases by 9 fold. If I double the archi halide and leave the nucleophile the same, then the reaction will double. If I leave the archi halide the same and I double the nucleophile, then the reaction doubles. Does that make sense? So that's what I want you guys to be able to recognize with SN1 and SN2. Now, Another thing I want you guys to keep in mind with SN1 and SN2, because SN1 goes through the formation of a carbocation, then chances are that tertiary archi halide will prefer to go through an SN1 because it will form a more stable carbocation. In fact, any group that will form a more stable carbocation will prefer to go through an SN1. That is why groups like uh, the, the benzyl, for example, if I give you this group here, with a positive charge and I ask you I want somebody to answer it would this thing go through an SN1 or an SN2 let me put it down let me draw it this way if I put bromine here would this molecule prefer to react through an SN1 or an SN2 quick question SN2 it will most likely SN2 SN1 because it's bulky. Ah, uh, ah, okay. Yeah, we are getting into trouble. <laughs> yes, so I will go. I will. I would think this will most likely go through an SN1, because if I think of it going through an SN1, first thing uh, Amalia said because it's bulky. Yes, I will accept that. But more importantly, more importantly is because if you think about it going through an SN1, it means that it will go through the formation of this carbocation. And this is a stable carbocation. I hope you know why. Because this is a benzylic carbocation. You remember that? Benzylic is more stable than tertiary. So, the reason why this would prefer to go through an SN1, first because you have a bulky group. And then secondly, you can form a stable carbocation, which is a benzylic carbocation. So that's what I want you guys, that's the way I want you guys to think about it. If you can form a stable carbocation, then SN1 is kind of favored. It's the same. Uh, Dr. Zico? Yes, sir. Oh, is it because the, um, are you saying bulky as in the alpha halide is bulky? Yes, as bulky as because of the presence of that ring. Does that make sense? 
So without a ring, is it not bulky? Well, without the ring, for example, if I have this one only, you see, this one doesn't have a ring. So this is not bulky. First, and then this one, if I want to imagine this one to go through an SN1, then I will imagine that it will go through a formation of this carbocation. And my question is, is this carbocation stable? No. No, because it's a primary carbocation. So this guy here can never undergo an SN1. Never. I want it to be clear that way. Zico? Yes. Um, I thought that um, bulky groups were favored by elimination reactions. So no, right? Um, I know no, right now I am talking about a comparison between SN one and SN two. I'm done with elimination for now. Remember, you, you, you. I, I first compare elimination among itself, and then compare SN one and SN two among themselves. Then I will not do a cross comparison. I will do a cross comparison also. Does that make sense, Zion? Yes, yeah, he understood. Okay, perfect, perfect. So, SN2, primary and secondary alkyhalides definitely prefer to go through SN2. Okay, no, they will prefer to go through SN2. Now, with the SN1, another example with the SN1. With the SN1, you want a small nucleophile. Small nucleophile, meaning less bulky nucleophile, will prefer to go through an SN1 also. I think even the small one will also prefer to go through an SN2. Okay. Even a small nucleophile will prefer to go through an SN2. And then in terms of living group, the living group, the iodide is a better living group than the bromide, which is a better living group than the chloride, which is a better living group than the fluoride. And this one is true for everyone. It's true for the SN1, it's true for the SN2, it's true for E1, it's true for E2. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, again, I will emphasize again, take note of the stereochemistry. Take note of the stereochemistry. There is uh, something we did in class. Uh, let, me, let me pull that example of what we did in class. I will emphasize on that particular example. Uh, it has to do with the stereochemistry. It was that class where uh, we did a lot. Yes, you remember we talked about this slide here. Let me let me go through this slide again quickly, because this is an important slide that talk about the stereochemistry of the product. That's an important slide. Okay. Now, will the product be an E or a Z? Okay. Will the product be an E or a Z? And I told that it all depends. When I look at my starting material here, when I look at the starting material here. And I pay attention, I pay specific attention to these two carbons. Those are my two carbons of interest. And I look at the first carbon, I notice that the bulky group, which is C6H5, is already in a transposition with respect to this other bulky group here. Do you see that? The two bulky groups are already in a transposition. It means that in my final product, they will stay trans. Does that make sense? It means that in my final product, they will stay trans. But now look at the second example over here. In this other example here, my bulky group and this other CH3 groups are cis because they are all on the dash dash. Do you see that? Because they are cis on my final product, they end up being cis. That's something I wanted to draw your attention to. 
I wanted to draw your attention to this again. I hope that makes sense for everyone. So initially, if your bulky groups are already trans to each other, they will end up being trans. And I know that they are trans to each other because one is on the on the witch, the other one is on the dash. That's the meaning of being trans. Over here, the product also will be trans. So now, does this only apply in the E2 reaction? That only applies in the E2 reaction. In the E1 reaction, because it goes through a carbocation, there will be a mixture. Okay. And in the E1 reaction, because it's a carbocation, although there will be a mixture, there will be preference for the E, because the E generally is more stable than the Z. Is that okay? Now, the second example, the bulky groups initially has a cis configuration. So, the product will also be in a cis configuration. Are we good? And again, I know, you guys know how to determine this absolute configuration. The S and the R. If you don't know, I am sure we went through that. We've revised that already, how to determine the absolute configuration. That's important too. Any other question? That's what I've prepared for you tonight. Unless you guys have more questions. Any question? <laughs> Someone said he wanted multiple choice. Yes, Zuri. I can't, I can't get to well. Repeat that again. I'm saying <laughs> some of the other computers are loud and it's difficult to hear the information. Oh, so what do you want me to do now? <laughs> Essentially, if you're not asking a question, you should be on mute. Period. Yeah, yeah, Okay, are we good now? Two week? Can we go now? I think we are good. Let's continue it tomorrow, right? Okay. Yes. You said you're gonna post a try your hand. Have you posted out already? I posted a try your hand, and that's the one we're going through. <laughs> I we're, was asking. Yeah. We're, oh, sorry. Yeah, we're going. We're going through it tomorrow at uh, eight o'clock, and then if we don't finish it, then we'll probably continue it during the lap time. But I really hope we we, we get we do it completely. Um, could we do a SN1 example or elimination? An example of an SN1 mechanism? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Don't worry about the mechanism for the SN1. Okay. Yes, just know that the SN1 uh, goes through a cabocata yarn. Okay, I think it's time for bed. You guys should go and sleep so that you'll be in class tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Good night. Thanks for being around. Good night. Yes, I think this was a nice experience. Maybe in the future we'll have to do it again. Yeah, do it again. Yes. Yeah, let's do it again. Yes, again. thank you. Bye bye to everyone. Good night. Good night, Dr. Good night. Love you. Yeah, we love you. I love you guys too. Bye bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. <laughs> That was <laughs> <laughs> Yeah